Hey everybody, it's Brian from Archaeus again, and today I'm going to introduce you to my workflow with Adobe Audition when working with Premiere projects. When Premiere's built-in audio effects just won't cut it for especially noisy or damaged audio, it's best to pull the clip into a specialized audio editor for intensive repair. I use Audition when working with Premiere projects due to the built-in interoperability between the programs. Audition also offers a unique approach to visualizing audio and makes abing effects processes a breeze. Let's say I've been working with this clip in Premiere and I just can't seem to get it sounding right. I can right-click on the clip and select Edit Clip in Adobe Audition to export it for treatment. Now it's important to understand what happens when you do this, because things can quickly get very messy and confusing file management-wise. When you select this option, Premiere will render and replace the clip, creating a new audio file labeled Audio Extracted in the same location as the original source clip. The new audio file's start and end points will be the same as those of the clip, including content used for crossfades at either end if applicable, but that's it. This means that once the audio is pulled back into Premiere, you will not be able to extend the handles of the clip past the original start and end points. Because of this, it's best to make sure that all your clip lengths and audio transitions are locked down before beginning this process. It's also important to note that any audio effects that have already been inserted on the clip will be baked into this new audio file. Even if I've been working hard to dial in compression, EQ, or other settings, I want to make sure to remove these attributes before rendering and replacing the clip. Reason being, I always want to handle audio repair work first before any other processing. In order to avoid losing the work I've done so far, I will copy and paste the attributes to a different clip temporarily before removing them from the clip to be repaired. That way, I have the ability to copy and paste them back once I pull the audio back in from Audition. However, more often than not, I find that the audio repair process alters the dynamics and timbre of the clip significantly enough to warrant re-sweetening post-repair. Let's talk about Audition's interface now. Keep in mind that while editing a clip in Audition, you are making changes to the audio file itself, meaning it will be destructively processed each time you save. In other words, you are saving over the original file. If for any reason you wish to preserve the original rendered and replaced clip, you should save as a new file before applying any effects. The disadvantage of this is that you will need to pull in the new clip manually once it's been repaired, as Premiere will still be referencing the original audio extracted file. The first feature of Audition's interface you'll notice is this glorious spectral frequency display, which allows you to easily distinguish which frequencies are most prevalent. Time is represented horizontally along the x-axis, frequency content is represented vertically along the y-axis, and dynamics are represented by color. Colors range from dark purple for lower volume frequencies to bright yellow for high volume frequencies. This makes the display perfect for visually identifying coughs, screaming children, machinery, or other unwanted sounds. To zoom in, simply scroll up anywhere in the main editor panel and scroll down to zoom out. The waveform display at the top of the editor window gives a convenient bird's eye view of what part of the file is being focused on in the spectral display, which can be adjusted by scrolling left and right. To view a more detailed waveform display alongside the spectral frequency display, you can grab this bar that sits right below the time ruler and drag it down. You can also adjust the frequency focus of the spectral display by holding down command while scrolling. To apply an effect to the clip, select the effect from the effects menu and dial up the desired settings. You can audition the effect using the preview play stop button in the bottom left corner of the plugin window of the clip. and AB the results using the green power button to its left. The new audio file's start and end points will be the same as those of the clip. Once all settings have been dialed in, click Apply to process the audio. You'll notice that the spectral display adjusts to reflect the changes. As you can see, all frequencies below 1000 Hz now have been filtered out. Audition also offers a variety of specialized selection tools, enabling you to apply effects to specific portions of the clip only. One of the most useful features of Audition is the history panel, which keeps a running record of all effects processes and the sequence in which they were applied. At any given point, you can click on any process in this panel for a quick before and after comparison. Once the clip is ready to go, save the file, close out of Audition, and the audio extracted clip will automatically update in Premiere. The new audio file's start and end points will be the same as those of the clip. If you plan to process multiple clips, it's a good idea to keep Audition open so you don't have to keep reopening it every time. Just make sure to save and close each clip once it's been processed to your liking. Thanks for watching this intro to Audition workflow. 
In future tutorials, we'll dive deeper into specific audio repair tasks such as declipping, noise reduction, and sound removal. But in the meantime, please like, subscribe, and comment. We'd love to hear about what other audition or other audio-related topics you'd like to see covered.